1939, the Air Ministry acquired a disused quarry in order to build a bomb storage facility to store 18,000 tons of bombs. Now back in 1941, if you would have stood looking at the view you're looking at now, you would have seen something completely different. That is what you would have seen. Because in order to protect this from enemy aircraft, the building was covered with 40 tons of waste slate. Now, during construction, the Treasury were keen to reduce costs. This meant that corners were cut with devastating consequences. On January 25th, 1942, a train of 27 wagons was unloading its cargo of bombs when two-thirds of the structure collapsed burying over 14,000 tons of bombs. The pictures you're looking at now are obviously of the structure once the site had been cleared. You can see where the roof would have been attached to the top of the walls there. And if you look at what remains of the structure, then that is what this area of, which is now effectively wasteland, would have been like. Now, the trains carrying their deadly cargo will have come into the storage facility through this tunnel here, which runs underneath the A4086, which is the main Clamberis Road. Now, you see the gates ahead of us there, which are securely locked. The other side of those gates, there is no evidence at all that there was once a railway there. Unlike this side where there is evidence, you've got the platform and you've got the railway tracks. But there is the other side of those gates. And as we pull away from the gates, I mean, it's well and truly fenced off. You, you, you can't really get in there. Um, no evidence of any railway line there no sleepers no old track pretty well overgrown and this is actually a, there's actually an industrial estate here now nothing to suggest that this was once a busy railway siding and main railway line that that you're looking at now is now a cycle track but that was the main railway line and further down there's a railway tunnel that uh, the trains used to pass through right so there we have the tunnel which was the old main line railway which is now a busy cycle track suitable for dog walkers and such forth but back to the bomb store, there was also another tunnel there, which is for a narrow gauge railway, which also runs underneath the main A4086 Clamberis Road. But unfortunately, this tunnel is well and truly You might just be able to see at the end there where it's all bricked up. It, it, it's totally blocked off. You can't get through that one at all. So there's no other end to find on that. But at the end, within the bomb store, you can still see the tracks. There are still tracks in the ground there, look. There's still evidence of the railway there. Okay, so now let's move inside the building and see if we can get a sense of what it used to be like to work in such a building like this. Here you can see we're walking along the platform. You can see clearly see the railway line to the right there. Yeah, 
Now, if you look across the platform there at the stairs the other side, I would imagine that is where the offices were. If you, you can look down the platform here, you can see the length of the platform. So the chain will obviously have come in there with its cargo. either load or unload they used to ship bombs to all the uh, airfields across the country from here and up the stairs here I would imagine this would have been the office area where all the paperwork was done for loads coming in and out back to the platform there now the storage areas were identified with letters and numbers I'll try and show you a few of these now because each area looks pretty much the same throughout the entire building a10 is one that the storage areas there and there's the office areas up the stairs there so A10 looks like it will have been the main loading and unloading area. Now if we get back into the main part of the storage area. You'll see just through this arch here where we go through now. We're in L9. You can just about see that on the wall there. And to the left is storage area. L10 here we are in area L9 you can see on the wall there through the arch we are in K9 nothing to do with dogs and the other side of K9 is K10 Through the next arch is J9. And I presume the other side there is J10. There it is on the wall there, look, J10. Right, let's go back down to the ground floor area for a moment. The building was serviced with some enormous lifts. I'm going to go and take a look at one of the lifts now. This is area C7. Now one thing to notice about this lift. Remember after the collapse the site was cleared. They continued working here. Note the wall that is bricked up there. Obviously the lifts were used to transport bombs from one floor to the other. But after the collapse, they had the uh, the building was open ended, so they they've had to brick it up. But as you can see, that brick wall there will have made this lift unusable. Can't get anything in out in and out of it. So they must have struggled a little bit with uh, operations after that collapse. Now the storage facility remained in use after the war but all functional stock was removed by March of 1955 and the depot closed in July 1956. There was then a rather lengthy costly operation to clear the area of all explosives. 
Right now, I'm unable to find any information. I've done research and I can't give you any details, I'm afraid. But it was decided some years later that they would build an industrial estate around the area of the bomb store. And they spent an awful lot of money putting in this infrastructure of road and footpaths to service the industrial area and then it was scrapped so all this roadway that you're looking at now hasn't even seen a car and there's an awful lot of it footpaths as well they even put the footpaths in ready for pedestrians to make their way through so anyway sorry I can't give you any information on that but there it is you can enjoy uh, looking at the empty roads there so anyway I thank you for watching this video I am going to leave you with some clips from inside the bomb store and I hope you found this video interesting and informative mm -hmm.